Well, I mean, it could it could be something as simple as tunnel vision, right? Because in, in a lot of cases, you know, a lot of people think IPO, right? And, and IPO may not be the best course of action. Hey, this is Aaron Price and welcome back to another episode with Tech United. Today, we're going to talk about how your startup can avoid key growth mistakes. I'm very excited to welcome Alex Teichman from Cross River, Rob Trenery from KPMG. Both of you, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Rob, I, I, I'm hoping we can bring a little more enthusiasm. So I'm going to start with you <laughs> on introducing yourself and some of your experience in the startup community. Sure. Yeah. My, uh, my name is Rob Trenery. Uh, I'm a tax partner at KPMG based out of our Short Hills office. Um, I've been working, uh, living and working in, in New Jersey pretty much all my life. And um, for me, what I bring uh, to the table is, is, is um, you know, the, uh, the background in, in, in not only uh, leading our private enterprise practice uh, on the tax side in New York Metro, but also as a national leader servicing companies anywhere from IPO, pre-IPO, startup, privately held, PE owned, venture capital backed, to public companies, um, mid-sized, large, and, and, and small. So I, I bring a sort of a breadth of experience from that standpoint. Excellent, it's great to see you today. Alex, nice to see you. If you could also introduce yourself. Sure, thanks so much, Aaron, and thanks for having me here. Um, Alex Heishman from Cross River Bank out of our Fort Lee office. Um, been in payments for about 15 years, uh, have been kind of supporting and solutioning with startups throughout my career at Cross River. Really, my focus is to drive kind of the execution and support of our both startup and enterprise um, technology partners focused around financial technology. Uh, where we get excited is partnering with startups um, and kind of entrepreneurs in the financial technology space and kind of solutioning and helping them grow. And excellent. I, you know, I know people know KPMG, but Alex, if you could just quickly, you know, for those who aren't as familiar with Cross River, um, it's not it's not the typical bank. I think as people know a bank, so maybe you could just let people quickly know what Cross River is all about. Yeah, absolutely. So Cross River, we 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 pride ourselves in calling uh, kind of calling ourselves a technology company that happens to be a bank. Um, we are about a five hundred people um, bank based in Fort Lee, New Jersey, out of out of about a little over 500 people, we're about 120 developers. So we, we, really, we really pride ourselves in um, kind of the, the technology that we offer within payments, kind of the world that I live in. Um, uh, you know, everything is API based. And so when we think about how do we help solution and support for uh, startups and technology partners, it's really um, kind of how do we offer that regulatory lens and offer them the financial products in order to be able to go out into the market. Awesome, and it's been great to be uh, along for the ride for Cross River's, Cross River's growth over the last few years. So Rob, let's start with you. What are some common mistakes that you see founders make when they get started? Well, I mean, I, I think for me, it's, it's, you know, don't be afraid to have a plan B, a plan C, a plan D, right? Because, you know, there, there's just this, um, you know, just, just, just the idea that, that sometimes, you know, you have to have sort of this one great idea and, and, and there's nothing wrong with having several great ideas. There's nothing wrong with, with having a mindset where you can pivot from, from A to B to C. So it's really just seeing that there's a vast amount of opportunity out there for you and, and, and really just not being afraid to sort of plan around it. Have you seen founders um, get so stuck on their plan A that they're unwilling to move to a plan B and, and maybe at you know, the cost of too much time in building their business? I mean, you, you do see that sometimes and, 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 and quite often it may sort of gravitate around that plan A, um, but, but just having that, that, that sort of ability to look to your periphery to look behind you and, and just seek opportunity from all directions, I think is, is, is just a good mindset to have. Yeah. Alex, from your point of view, what are some uh, common mistakes you see founders make? Yeah, I think the word pivot is so important, Rob, that you mentioned that. Um, I think often, you know, entrepreneurs are exceptionally passionate about what they want to do and what they want to put out, whether it's a product or a service, um, and they want to hold on to that. 
And I think that's fantastic. I think it's important to have that passion, but also to be able to kind of look to the side and to see where are you excelling? Where are you able to really build a business within that passion? How do you kind of really, um, you know, kind of uh, narrow down what your specialty is and where you can excel? Um, I think that becomes really important. The other area that we see is, you know, kind of within Crest River and our, and our ventures team, you know, we kind of partner with them uh, very closely. And, and um, from, from the perspective of kind of spending too much too fast um, uh, and, and, and the, the thought being that, well, if I invest everything into the kind of this one concept before I even have proof of concept um, can, can become a little bit of a, of a, of a, of an obstacle down the road, I think. Yeah, Alex, I think that's a, a great point you just made is wise investment, right? I mean, know where to, know where to invest your resources because they're often not unlimited, right? And so, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, knowing when to sort of move those chips to the right, to the right place at the right time is, is important. So often founders have ideas of things that are against the grain or not obvious and so they're getting market signals. Some people saying, no, no, that'll never work until it does. And then sometimes it's, oh, no, that'll never work. And it doesn't. And more often than not, it doesn't. But to your point, Alex, about being open to pivot, how do you, you know, when you work with founders, where do you find the balance between, you know, this might be crazy enough to work and this just might be crazy? How do you, how do you work with founders to help them figure out what, what signals to listen to, to your point? That's a good question. I think it's important to really be able to, to, to be a little bit objective about what it is that you're doing um, and, 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 and have a different perspective, maybe. Um, you know, Cross River, just by our sheer DNA, we are very pro um, kind of pushing the envelope a little bit and, and supporting our financial technology partners um, in, in, in doing so and putting out products that are really going to help um, change the way um, uh, uh, financial products are being consumed or um, the way technology uh, is, is supporting um, that arena. Um, and so I think also finding the right partners that understand your language that perhaps see your lens um, and, and, and can understand and digest what you're trying to do in a way that is reasonable and realistic, frankly. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I mean, Rob, um, you know, I think people know KPMG. I think of it, I would expect as a risk adverse organization. So how do you think about in working with, you know, early stage growing companies all the way through ideally an IPO, how to talk them through risk taking, how to share your perspective in a way that can be valuable to the business that they're building? Yeah, I mean, you definitely, you definitely hit it on the, on the, on the nose in that, you know, we, we tr do try to focus on being risk adverse, um, obviously. Um, but, but for me personally, I mean, I just try to be there <laughs> as a trusted advisor to, to my clients and, and, and really just a listening ear, right? Because sometimes, you know, I, I don't necessarily have all the answers, um, but, but I'm here to listen to them and, and sort of help, help them work through uh, the thought process, so to speak. Um, and so at, at the same time, you know, you know, we're here to sort of help them provide the service they need, whether it's an audit, tax, advisory, whatever that might be. Uh, but at the same time, I'm here to listen to them and, 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 and let them talk through some of, the, some of the nuances they're dealing just purely from a business perspective. What about from a personal perspective? I mean, I've been a founder several times over. Yep. And uh, in fact, the reason I ended up in this role is because I started the New Jersey Tech Meetup to surround myself with entrepreneurs because yep. it was such an isolating career path. There's a lot more in market now to build, you know, to find community, to find people to, to talk to in this space. But do yep. you find, do either of you find yourselves talking to founders about some of the implications of, you know, the personal stress that these things can, you know, the toll it can take on an individual? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 can, I can certainly relate to that, right? Because in, in many respects, um, you know, I, I sort of view myself just as much as part of not only a big organization, right, a, a, a big a big public accounting firm, but at the same time, I run my, my own small business at the same time in that, you know, I, I view, I view every, 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 every client that I have as sort of a per personal relationship, right? And so, um, you know, taking my own personal experiences and, and, and trying to balance the business with the personal and, 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 and keeping that all sort of in, 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 in harmony is important, I think, to, to, to anybody. 
Yeah, yeah I, it's I, kind of the same question for you. I think there's an over celebritization around like companies raising fortunes and these huge rounds of capital. I'm wondering, you know, what you hear when you work with growing companies. You know, I think for for particularly for startups and for for companies that are starting out, their north star can be, but perhaps going IPO or raising lots of money and becoming a unicorn. But I think really when you kind of, what grounds you is what is your, what are you trying to do? What's your mission? What problem are you trying to solve? And how are you going to do it? Um, and, and being able to track along the way, um, both from a kind of expenses standpoint, Rob, to your point, right? But also from a, are you actually um, actioning and being productive and, and, and hitting certain milestones? Um, and, 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 and maybe in your long term is the IPO, but what are you doing in the next six months? Six months is a really long time in technology, right? And so how are you changing and evolving both personally and professionally? Uh, back to your original point, Aaron. Um, and, and, and I think that network and that community is so important because often, and particularly in tech, often you have this crazy revolutionizing idea um, and you're super passionate about it. And this is what you want to do. And you think this is going to be the next big thing. And it may very well be the next big thing, but you need to ensure that you're surrounding yourself with the right types of people that understand the value that you're trying to bring, understand the product uh, or the kind of uh, uh, the service that you're trying to, trying to conceive. Um, I think that's super important. Yeah, and Alex, I think you made a, a, another great point at, at the end there is, is surrounding yourself with, with the right people, the right team, uh, whether that's internally as, as partners or employees or as outside advisors, right? I mean, I think it's important to surround yourself with, with, with the right people that are going to be supportive to your mission. I mean, so I Rob, think that, on this, oh, go ahead, Alex. Yeah, no, uh, just, a, just a closing kind of comment that. I've been in payments for about 15 years. I think throughout the 15 years that I've been in this industry, we realized that it's so small and close, close, close knit, right? But at the same time, there's always opportunities to bring in different perspectives. So it's, it's, it's that balance, I think that's important. Um, and, and to consistently kind of both have that community, but also have different perspectives that'll help you pivot to our, to our kind of first, first question that you had. I mean, it's often bringing in people I find from, from outside an industry that help you rethink what's going on in a, you know, in FinTech, for instance, to bring in people who aren't in FinTech to yeah. help you think through coming up with solutions. So do you have suggestions of where people might find advisors? How do they find people they can trust? What, I mean, I, I think the whole puzzle here is what advice do you listen to and what do you just go with your, your passion and your gut around? What advice would you give a, let's say, a, an early stage founder who's thinking about something? We'll take, it, we'll say, in this case, the, the payment space, about who to talk to about whether this an idea is worth pursuing. I mean, I always go back to balance. I think it's a healthy balance of both. You need, I think, you need a little bit of both. Um, it, it's that kind of outside perspective. A lot of um, kind of the, the the fintechs that you see out there that have hit the the billions of dollars in, in valuations started out as completely being outside the industry. You know, Stripe, as an example, came in and they weren't in payments. They didn't know what credit card processing was. And um, yeah, they tried to sign up for a merchant account. Um, and and uh, it was so complicated and so convoluted for them. And they said, well, we can do this a little bit better. And they did. I think the key for, 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 for them and for others is once you kind of have a proof of concept to a certain degree, once you have a product in the market, and once you start hiring and bringing on a team, is ensuring that you have that expertise in that industry within your team. Um, and they can help build those guardrails to a certain degree and help you kind of navigate. Um, and whether it's from a regulatory standpoint, whether it's the right types of partners and vendors to bring in and can bring you that expertise um, to help you kind of get to the next level and scale and grow. Rob, let's jump in on, you know, let's say you surround yourself with good advisors, you actually find some product market fit and you're growing. Yep. What are some missteps that you see early stage companies make that might actually have a massive implication to an IPO or an acquisition later down the road? Well, I mean, it could, it could be something as simple as tunnel vision, right? Because in, in a lot of cases, you know, a lot of people think IPO, right? And, and IPO may not be 
the best course of action, right? I mean, it may be a course of action, but, but you also have to know what that's going to mean, right? There's a, a lot of investment in process and, and other things that, that, that go into uh, an IPO, right? And, and in that, that extends past just the IPO process. And so kind of knowing and understanding what that means up front is important and not having that tunnel vision because there may be other options out there aside from that, right? I mean, it may, it may make sense to continue as a, a privately owned company. It may make sense to bring in some other investor, whether it's in private equity or, or, or expanded investment in venture capital. I mean, that IPO may make sense. It may be a strategic uh, option that may be your exit at some point in time in the future. So, you know, avoiding that, that tunnel vision um, and understanding what, what each of those scenarios would mean from your perspective and, and spending time outlining it, mapping it out. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, I always kind of look at it as, as, as those are those after hours that business owners spend really, really thinking about the long-term considerations of the business. Right. And when I say long-term, you know, I think Alex, you mentioned six months. Yeah. There's six months, there's 12 months, there's five years and, and then there's outward. Right. And so, you know, don't, don't, don't underestimate the, 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 um, the mindset of, of thinking through that process. Yeah. I, I also, you know, I think that in, in the startup world, it's like six days, right? I, I, six months is an eternity and, and, you know, you could run out of capital in two weeks. Yeah. You know, I think the idea of after hours is mostly just hours in, 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 when you're early stage startup, but I, I, I hear your point. And I also think it drives the question of how you finance your business, right? So if you're, if you're thinking about one outcome over another, you, it may or may not be appropriate to raise venture capital versus, you know, keep the mm-hmm. business you know, completely private, et cetera. So I, I think being thoughtful about those things early on obviously makes a, a big difference. There's a tension between, you know, if you, you know, down that, down that path, if you raise money from, you raise venture capital, often they're looking for financial growth. If you talk to founders like Mark Laurie from, you know, who was, who was Jet.com and Gary V, they'll talk about leaning into the, the human factor and investing in your people. I'm curious from, from either of your perspective, as you think about growing revenue or growing your team, prioritizing your time, you know, you've got 75 balls up in the air at any given point, as a, especially in the early days, but I think as things grow, how do you think about or how do you advise people on prioritizing that balance? I, so to take a step back, I think there's three things that are super important, right? When you think about starting up an organization, um, particularly within kind of any, any type of technology focused organization is kind of the, the, the product, obviously, that you're trying to put in market, the product market fit, the market, right? Wh- whether there's enough space for you, frankly, in the market, what are you trying to do that's different? What are you trying to solution and solve? And then there's a team. And I think with the team, to your, to your question, and kind of bringing on the right team is, is, is so important. I think often um, entrepreneurs, when they have a little bit of, um, um, of, of revenue or of kind of dollars to spend, they, they start thinking, well, I want to scale. In order to scale, I need to bring on a team to help me do so. Um, and you've got to, I think, I think you do have to find that kind of fine line between do I want to, is this additional um, kind of, uh, uh, um, teammate that I'm bringing on, are they going to help me drive that revenue? Um, and not only kind of cover for themselves, but kind of exponentially add to the bottom line. Um, I think that becomes an important conversation and, and, and what is the, the value that they bring to their overall organization, I think is important. So I, I think there's, there's space for both driving revenue and, and bringing on the right team. Um, I think it's doing it in a really kind of thoughtful, um, uh, intentional way and understanding why you're bringing on this team member. Um, Alex, I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit because I know Cross River has experienced some explosive growth in the last few years. What's been one of the missteps in growing the team at Cross River? You know, I think anytime when you grow an organization too fast, you have to be thoughtful and you have to be conscious of, of am I hiring the right people? Um, you know, technology financial technology specifically is a, you know, hot market. Um, and so finding the right talent is, is, is not easy um, at times. Um, and so for, for us, I think, you know, it's, it's getting that additional perspective when we bring on teammates, when we kind of expand roles um, uh, has been, has been, has been really an important part of the process um, and making sure that 
you've got the right processes and procedures as you scale and as you grow as an organization. It's not a small shop anymore, right? It's a large enterprise organization. And you've and as much as you don't want to overprocess the, 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 the process, but you, you do need to make sure that you can replicate, scale, and do it in a thoughtful way. Yeah, makes sense. Rob, any thoughts on, on this balance of kind of revenue and, and team growth? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, 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 think, I think the team concept kind of goes, goes in two directions, right? I mean, you're going to have, you're going to have those on your team that are going to help you see that strategic growth from, from a revenue growth perspective, right? And then, and then you're going to have those that are going to support the process around you, right? And so this kind of goes back to this idea of if you're going to be a public company, right? I mean, you need, you need a finance team, you know, you, you're probably going to, you know, you're going to need legal counsel, you're going to need, you know, you're going to need other sort of people that are going to support the process around it. So whether it's HR, whether it's tax, whatever it might be, um, you, you're going to need people to support, to support around that. So there's that side of it that won't necessarily drive revenue, but uh, is just as important because that really sort of provides that backbone, backbone of what, of what, you know, your investors and others in the market are going to be looking for. Right. And so, so I, I, I think thinking of it in that concept is, you know, you need to have those complements in place, particularly as you, as you start to mature. Right. And so we're sort of thinking a little bit beyond just that initial startup phase and, into a, a, a slightly more mature phase where you're generating revenue, you're, you're, you're thinking about those next steps and, and, and what you're going to need to have around you to support you. And, and speaking about, you know, having people around you and the community around you, you know, Rob, I've known you now for several years. How have you yeah. seen the Tech United New Jersey community evolve over the last you know, few years or, or even decade? Yeah, I mean, I, I can point to the Propelify event, right? I mean, to me, which is, which is just an outstanding event, which, which sort of brings together all of these different ideas and concepts of the community around you. And so, um, you know, I, I think to me, that's, that's, that's one way to sort of look at, you know, this, this, this concept or this idea of, you know, it's, it's, it's a New Jersey community, but, but we do extend beyond New Jersey in, in many sense, right? I mean, I can sort of look over your shoulders and, and see, you know, New York City in the, in the, in the skyline there, right? So, um, you know, so seeing past that, but, but, but we work together as a New Jersey community. I think that's important. Agreed. Alex, any thoughts on the, on the local community and how we can, you know, how we've evolved over the last few years? Um, I, you know, I think it's, it's a continuous um, evolution and bringing in different kind of perspectives. Because when you say technology, it can, it, it really goes across so many industries, so many areas um, and there's, you know, thankfully there's been lots of different communities that have propped up that to support, um, whether it's startups, whether it's kind of, uh, women in startup communities, women in payments, women in technology. I mean, there's just, it's, so that's really, really refreshing. I think that's, um, I helps, um, uh, kind of, uh, individuals in those, in those communities. And then just us as a kind of technology <clears throat> kind of ecosystem overall um, and, and bringing all of that together, I think makes us really powerful. Um, and, and, and having that kind of support system is, 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 really, is really important. Totally agree. Well, I wanna thank you both for being supportive, uh, not just today with, with helping entrepreneurs, but of the Tech United New Jersey community overall. And to remind people watching, the reason we do this is for exactly the reason that they both ended on, which is to help entrepreneurs thrive, to help startups grow and to raise the bar for the region. We don't do this because of New Jersey. We have a high bar of excellence. We just want the region to thrive. And so if you need help, reach out to Rob, reach out to Alex. That's what we're here for. We want to see you do well. So I want to thank both of you for joining us. Normally, if we were in person, we'd end on a high five in person, which is a little <laughs> challenging to do, but we'll high five the camera on the count of three. One, two, three, boom. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Alex from Cross River, Rob from KPNG. We'll talk to you soon.